real estate agent, a place to get inspiration on how to supercharge your real estate business by tapping into your creativity. I'm your host, Anastasia Forrest, broker associate with eXp Realty, and today I have got an amazing guest who happens to be my eXp sponsor, Greg McDaniel. <laughs> Greg is a real estate rock star based out of California in the San Francisco Bay, specifically the East Bay area. Mm -hmm. And he has been crushing it for a very long time, well over 20 years in real estate. Um, in addition to being a partner at McDaniel Callahan team, Greg is also an experienced real estate coach and co-host of the popular real estate podcast, Real Estate Uncensored, which I have talked about before in this podcast, and you will <laughs> hear me talk about it again. Um, so I'm really excited to have this conversation with Greg and get to share with you all the amazing value that he's got. Um, and without any further ado, thank you so much for being here, Greg. Welcome to the show. Anastasia, it is my distinct pleasure to be here with you. I am I was honored when you asked me to come on to your show. Uh, and I think you and I are going to have an absolute blast today talking about everything, anything that you're going to throw at me. I know there's going to be a lot of different questions and I don't know what they are. It's going to be a freaking blast. So let's just get weird, have fun, and let's answer some questions, help some folks. That sounds great. That sounds great. All right. Yeah. Um, you weren't the first person I thought to interview for this podcast because. Okay. Now my feelings are hurt. That's it. <laughs> show over. Hey, Stacy, never get me on her show again. She, I wasn't the first. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, the reason is the only reason is because the, you actually have told me that you don't, you're not a creative person, but I don't think this is true, but you know. there's the pros and cons on that when it comes to being creative i mean if i'm going to go out there and try to be a cook dude i freaking suck at that okay oh, me, too. I, me too i i tried to kill myself with hamburgers the other night i i don't know what the heck went wrong <laughs> and my girlfriend always tells me that she's that you know, she's like are you gonna try to kill me tonight and i'm like not on not intentionally but i mean <laughs> you, want me to, you want me to cook so creativity is is one thing that i mean when it comes to cooking and stuff like that and doing creative art and music, nah, I, 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 ain't, your fr I ain't the guy you, know, you go to. But when it comes to scripting, calls, you know, door knocking, prospecting, everything else, there's a guy climbing on a tree outside of my house. I didn't see him out there. All of a sudden, there's a guy climbing on my tree. <laughs> see, he's creative. Yeah, right, right, right. That's a little distracting. Yeah, a little yes. creative. Um, oh, I figured, I kind of thought that's what you meant because... Um, I think the first time that we talked, uh, I was in a little bit of a slump personally with, with real estate. I wasn't feeling very motivated. And you said, well, what do you like to do? Like what really gives you joy and makes you, you know, happy. And mm -hmm. I said, creating things, you know, I like, I like to sing. I like to write. I like to paint and you had, and, and, and like, right, right then and there, you gave me all these ideas of stuff I could do <laughs> with real estate, with my creativity. Like, and they're both really good ideas. One of them was um, to do Zoom calls with my daughter who I have shared custody of and do painting with mm -hmm. her and, yeah. and broadcast that and, you know, introduce it. I'm Anastasia Forrest with eXp Realty. And, you know, and that was one amazing idea. And I think the other idea was to, um, when I'm waiting at appointments, sketch, start sketching and make like a series. It could be like a cartoons or different things that have to do with real estate. Um, and anyway, so I think, I think you are creative, but like you said, it's, it's coming up with ideas and visions and, um, you know, and practical, well, practical applications. Well, well I just see the, 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 the uh, what I call a, a, the, the, uh, the superpower in every human being. So when you and I were talking, you were telling me things that you enjoyed. And so I tapped into that really quickly and I was just like, all right, girl, tell me about this. And you told me about it. I'm like, you got it. I mean, this is where you need to be. And this is a lot of people will dismiss to the fact that they have uniquely powerful sources in their body and they can do incredible things. I mean, like you're a painter and musician, guitar player, the whole thing. Me, dude, I can't even strike a G chord. I'm not, I'm, but if you want to talk about doing video or doing, you know, marketing or stuff like that, I can knock it out of the park for you. So we have different powers that we can tap into. And so I just unleashed a little bit of yours and you've been soaring with it. It's been amazing to watch you uh, grow from where you were. 
No, oh, thank you so much. Well, and it's <laughs> it's so it's so much more fulfilling too to be able to come from a place that is uh, you know, genuine, genuinely me, you know, and be able to unite that with real estate and helping people, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what most people need to do. They need just, just embrace who you are as a human being. And all of a sudden your career is going to explode because guess what? I take multi-million dollar listings and I'm not saying these numbers to, to brag. I'm just saying because that that's just my market here in the Bay area. That's, that's the only difference. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do it in jeans, vans, tennis shoes, t-shirts, and a baseball hat. And people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I just go in there and talk to them about whatever they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And we just kick back. Like I had a beer and a burger. He and I talked about trucks and politics and, we walked out, shook a hand, and bam, uh, I got a 1.8 million plus another 2.1 million dollar listing, and it's just because I connected, and that's that's my superpower. I can connect. Oh yeah, and yeah. I, and that's why I love what you're doing. That's cool. Thanks. Well, I thought it might be fun since the show is about creativity um, and real estate. I have found a quiz that I thought it might be fun to give you. It's called oh. "Are You a Creative Thinker." I love this. Let's go. Think? Okay. Sean and I tested this out last night. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. All right. Here we go. So the first question is, do you typically score lower than you had expected on standardized tests? Yes or no? Yes. I definitely score lower. I'm a bad test taker. 100%. <sighs> tests are their own. It's their own a different animal. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, my quiz is broken. It doesn't want to go anywhere. It's stuck there. All right. So just pick a question out of your brain. Let's go. Let's just riff all a little right. bit. All right. All right. All right. Okay. One yeah. of the, I remember one of the questions. It was a good one. It was, uh, does it typically take you longer to get a joke than other people? Or are you fast? <laughs> I'm pretty quick on jokes, actually. Okay. That is actually something I'm very, very quick on because I I'll find the humor in it and I actually make a lot of dumb jokes myself and I'm amazed at how how long it takes other people to get the joke. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, blah, 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 yakety schmack. And they're like, what? What? And I'm like, oh, come on. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't OK, and I, and I remember the other question. There's another question that was similar to this, but it has to do with work and it has to do with. Um, so if you're if you're at work and there's some problem that people are stuck on and nobody can figure it out are you the kind of person that walks in and it's just like what guys you just got to do this and like knows how to solve it yes i am actually i was in uh la this was probably 10 15 years ago i was in a top producer's office and in, in this lady was a very big producer right mm -hmm. and um she couldn't figure the situation out like uh, how to handle the situation and transaction and I was sitting there and I was trying to bite my tongue and I was biting my tongue and I was biting my tongue. And I said, oh my gosh, like enough. This is what you do. You do this, 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 this. Come back to that, then repeat and do that. And they're like, and she, she looked at me and she's like, that's, that's incredible. How did you know that? I'm like, question is, how didn't you know that? Let's be real on this one. Wow. So, that's so, well, that's the beauty of everybody thinking differently, I suppose. Yeah, it, it, well, it's just, I've been doing this for a long period of time. And so I, 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 when I see something, I can work it through very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I had a call with an individual who's very well known this morning. And this individual was having an issue about a certain subject matter. And I'm not, obviously I'm being very vague because I don't want to release the information about who, this, who, the, who, who they are. Um, and, I, and I walked this person through a series of questions. And at the end of it, they were like, man, I never thought about it like that. I'm like, you're welcome. Bill's in the mail. <laughs> I'm going to go back to bed now because you live on the East Coast. I live on the West Coast. You called me at five o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock your time. Oh uh, my God, you're killing I, me. I was just thinking that I know you just woke up or I thought you had just woke up. Good morning, by the way. Over there Thank you. California time. <laughs> I've been up since 445 this morning, actually. Oh man. Oh, it's man. not fun. It's oh. not fun. Yeah. But you know what? It's just what my body's conditioned to. And I think that comes down to a lot of the stuff you're talking about. It comes down to conditioning, correct? So when it comes down to questions or business or anything else, how are you going to condition your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul 
you know, into everything else. So if I can answer a question, you can ask a question. Um, it's, it's, it's like, how, I mean, how could you do a guitar? And I can't conditioning, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that, that, that big of a difference, right? You put time in, I haven't put time in. Yeah. And so you win on that one. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of things you put a lot more time on than I have. <laughs> <laughs> so so, you know, so if you guys just tuned in, we were, I was giving Greg a creativity quiz, but the, the internet got creative and didn't want to work. So I'm being creative and we're not doing that quiz anymore. We're I love on. the internet. Oh, I love it too. It's great. It's so unpredictable. So, oh. <laughs> so let's go, let's talk more about your history with real estate, because I happen to know after listening to Real Estate Uncensored for many, uh, many episodes. <laughs> um, your father, Terry McDaniel, has been a realtor for over 50 years. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Five zero, been, been a broker in three different states. He's won so many awards. He literally threw them away because they took up too much space in the garage. Oh. Um, and he so, yeah. Threw he threw them away? You know, he literally threw them away. He's like, morales. I mean, I guess and, what you do with them, you don't give them away, I guess. I mean... I mean, I remember walking when I was a kid, walking into his office, and it's not a joke, like his entire back wall and his side wall were completely covered in awards. And I was just, I, I didn't care. I was in junior high. Who cares about awards when you're in junior high, unless you're in a, like going to the baseball game, right? Yeah. Um, but it means a lot now. So yeah, he's been doing it for 50 years. Uh, my team manager, been doing it for 15 years. I've been doing it for 21 years. My team, my business partner has been doing it for 24 two years so we have over a hundred years of experience just between the four of us wow okay well i was wondering since you know you so you kind of followed in your dad's footsteps in a way right um did and i've heard the stories about him door knocking and all kinds of weather and you know tirelessly you know connecting with his neighbors and bringing them presents and treats and just you know all the stuff that he did we're a really right. hard worker um, and I was wondering what inspired you to pursue real estate? I mean, what made you want to do the same thing as him? Uh, do you want the truth or do you want like a fluffy answer? I want the truth. Uh, cause I was a dumbass and I flunked out of college. And so I worked in a warehouse. My father, I was the grunts, 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 assistants, grunts, grunt, uh, in the warehouse. And, uh, my dad, I was working there the, with my best friend It's his father's, it was his father's business. And uh, my dad looked at me one day and goes, Greg, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, well, why not? And he's like, let me talk to you about this. And so he broke it down. He wore me down. And finally I joined him and uh, I talked to my best. I remember this clear as day. I just turned 21. Right. And my best friend and I, you know, his name's Lonnie. He and I went out to a bar and he and I sat down and I, I, I kind of laid it out for him. I said, well, you know, what do you think this would be a good business for me? And he's like, Greg, you were built for real estate. And I said, what? And he's like, yeah, Greg, you're built for real estate. You got to do this. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a run. Keep in mind, I'm the guy with the earring, the black colored hair with the white, the white tips on it back in the 90s when the early 2000s when that, that was popular, you know, tattoos, you know, the whole nine yards. And my dad made me take my earring out, made me color, you know, color my hair back to normal brown, which is <laughs> the way it should be. Um, and then I got into it and I told my dad I was going to do real estate for about a year and then I'm going to move back down to LA where I was going to school and I was going to get back in. I was going to do uh, become a movie star. Well, 21 years later, ta -da, <laughs> that movie <didn't> star. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out so well. I mean, you're kind of a movie star. I'm watching you on a video right now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, we're talking tens of billions of people, not just not 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 kind of where I am now. But you know what? It actually worked out for the best. Um, you know, I, I've learned so many incredible lessons from my father, uh, from my business partner, from my team manager, from the people I'm around, from the folks like you that I interact with. Uh, I glean information off of every human being I come in contact with. So high insight, it has been a phenomenal choice to yeah. not go back down there. So uh, that's a that's a long answer to a short question when it comes to uh, to how I got into business. Uh, that's interesting. That's one I did not, I have not heard before. I've heard you talk you ever about heard Lonnie. This I, no, I don't think <laughs> I've heard that story before. Uh -uh. 
I got so many stories. What were you studying in college? I mean, uh, drinking drugs and girls. Okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was studying. And you flunked? <laughs> I didn't flunk on one of them, but I flunked on the other two. <laughs> but no, yeah, no, it's in all seriousness, I, uh, yeah. I always lost. Uh, I was completely lost. I had no idea. I didn't show up for classes. I got a solid D minus uh, all the way through my classes. My parents spent $100,000 on me to go to school for two years. <laughs> Um, and they just pulled the rip cord. And so I had no choice and I came back up here and, you know, here's the thing, my girlfriend right now, she's, she's incredibly intelligent in, in the profession that she's in. She went to school for 15 years and is doing well, very, very well for herself. Mm-hmm. I went to school for two years and that, and she learned through books. I learned through hard knocks on the street. So if I screwed up, I lost $25,000. That's my, that would be my commission every time I screwed, screwed up. So, mm-hmm. I mean, when it comes to education, I mean, you can't get a better education than losing 25 grand a pop. Yeah. High stakes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Have, so, okay. Since you came from this tradition of real estate, did you approach it in the same way that your father did? Or you, have you been able to put your own spin on it and use your creativity? To... <laughs> yeah. And all the podcasters, she's doing air quotes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's quote unquote creativity. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Um, when I first got in the business, I was 21 years old. I just, well, I just, I just turned 21, like I just said. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I didn't know what to do. I was lost as like a, like a, like a blind man, right. In a dark room in a bag. And so what I, I, what I did is I just followed what he was doing. So I, I combed my hair the same way. I wore the same kind of, like, kind of shirts. I wore the same kind of khaki pants. I wore penny loafers with pennies in them, yeah. um, with the same cologne. And by the way, I hate that freaking cologne. Um, and so I, I, I tried to be him in every single way. And I got, I wasn't comfortable in my skin and I really freaking hated it. It worked for him. He was comfortable. That was him. Right. Yeah. For me, all of a sudden I'm like, you know, forget this BS. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be me. And so, I mean, in the last decade or so, I mean, I've become myself when I started my podcast, I started cursing a lot. I'm not going to do this on your show. It's your show. Uh, but I curse a lot on my show. I make dumb 15 year old boy jokes. I laugh at stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. And guess what? We have one of the biggest podcasts in the real estate industry because I'm authentically me and people were gravitated towards me. Then I took off the custom shirts. I took off the tie. I wore a suit and a tie for a year straight. I mean, I'm talking like the family dinners to Christmas to you know, going out to the bar. I mean, I wore a tie every Guess who's texting me right now? The Grandmaster. Oh, weird. That's, that's interesting. That's strange. <laughs> yeah. And so you must know I'm talking about him. Right. Um, <laughs> and I just started wearing t-shirts, baseball hats. And I wear, sh- guys, for you, all of you guys that are listening, not watching, I'm wearing a shirt that says Lagunitas. It's my all-time favorite beer. Um, and I walk around in cat, you know, cargo shorts and flip-flops, painted toenails. And I do this for all for a reason. And it's just because it's authentically who I am. And yes, I will tell the story about the toenails in a second. Uh, <laughs> but I, but I, but I take two, one, five, seven, ten million dollar listings the way I dress, the way I act. Mm-hmm. The reason why is because I am who I am and people resonate with it. So that your listeners, when they hear this, I don't care what kind of freak you are. And we're all freaks in some weird way. Okay. Just be you. Go out there and have fun. This business doesn't need to be so high and tight. It really doesn't. You just need to understand who you are, embrace it, and your tribe will come running. Believe me on that one. I mean, I have another listing appointment for $3.2 million, and other ones for $750,000 coming up this week. Uh, just because I, I, I've just connected with folks. I have, another, I have another gal. She hit me up the other day. Uh, we had it listed for 1.8 and she hit me up. She's like, I don't know, Greg, do you think it's still 1.8? I'm like, no, I think you're more, more near two at this point. And she's like, thanks, Greg. You know, and it was just by, by being a human. 
Right. So I went off the rails. I'll shut up and I'll let you keep going with the questions. My I, apologies. I, I was just shocked you can buy something in California for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You guys that's have a properties? That's a that's a townhouse. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, painted toenails. Painted toenails. So uh, thank you, girlfriend and COVID. Um, <laughs> my girlfriend, she she couldn't get Manny Petties anymore, right? Because they shut everything down over here in California. So guess who was the guinea pig? And I have actually a photo I'll send to you on this after at, off air about her doing this. She was so excited. She's like, I want to paint your toenails. I'm like, no, no, no. You get one nail. She's like, I want one per foot. I'm like, gosh, damn it. Okay, one. Well, one, two, all of a sudden, 10. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I, I, I love wearing flip-flops like you guys in Florida. I love wearing flip-flops, right? Yeah. Even when it's raining, I love wearing flip-flops. Yeah. And I walked out of my building. Uh, about a, mm, three weeks ago, a month ago, there was this gal, never met her before in my life. She's walking her dog and she asked me for directions to a, to a, to a something around here in the area. And she and I got to talking and she looked down and she saw my painted toenails and she's like, oh my God, I love your toenails. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I love your toenails. I know it's a weird oh, thing to say, have a conversation with a straight guy and a straight girl. Right. right. But you know what? She's like, I love, I love your vibe. And I'm like, I like your vibe. You're a cool, you're a cool human. And she's like, what do you do for a living? You know, when you, the way you dress. And I'm like, I do real estate. She's like, oh my gosh, I, my mom lives here in the complex and uh, we're going to be needing to sell our house. Oh, give me your, God. give me your card. <laughs> and I thought it was BS, right? I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my card, you know, blah, blah, blah. She called me up two weeks ago and I feel so bad. And this is so heartbreaking. Her mother passed away you know within three days like completely unexpected hmm. and she's like greg you're the only person i'm gonna call because you and i had a connection and i said what was that connection she said you and i just vibed and i loved your energy and i dig the fact that you have painted toenails oh, and, man. <laughs> and and i was just like did that just really happen <laughs> wow that's but a that's good just one. But that's just being your inner true self, right? Now, do I like painted toenails? No. Do I like making my girlfriend happy and letting her explore and do crazy <laughs> stuff with me? Of course I do. Yeah. Now, did it, do, do people laugh at me? A thousand percent. <laughs> well, what color were they? Uh, I have a blue and a black. They're every other. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had an HVAC guy over here the other day uh and i'm like please disregard with the toenails and he's like <laughs> and i explained to him like whole girlfriend covid he's like bro i do that too no big deal <laughs> she, my girlfriend <laughs> my girlfriend did it too to me. oh that's funny well at least that you are a medical experiment your girlfriend's a surgeon right or something like that anesthesiologist oh okay <laughs> well i mean she didn't same difference sleep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She, when we met, she, uh, she didn't tell me what she did. And she, cause I, I didn't know anything about doctors. I mean, I, I've never wanted to date a doctor and all of a sudden she, you know, I'm like, what do you do for a living? She's like, I make people feel good. I'm like, are you a hooker? <laughs> and then I looked her up. I'm like, anesthesiologist. Oh my gosh. I think that's the people that make people go, go to sleep. And everybody <laughs> else is like, Oh my God, that makes so much money. And I'm like, not my money, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's just crazy how things work out. Oh, well, yeah. Well, the, that story about the connection that you had with your neighbor, um, you know, that's wonderful. That's beautiful, you know, and then it turned into oh, something that's going to help her and, you know, help you. Yeah, exactly. It's about finding your tribe. It's always about finding your tribe. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, that's something that drew me to uh, EXP and drew me to contact you, you know, because you started talking about, you know, come join my tribe at EXP Realty. And now I am mm -hmm. part of your EXP family tree. Yes, you are 100%. <laughs> and I'm super excited for you and trying to be a part of my um, part of my tree. I love watching you guys grow. Uh, you've been doing a phenomenal job of building your, your downline, your, your experience bloating in business i mean you have like what 50 or 75 deals under contract right now <laughs> i mean and you just keep growing it's yeah. just incredible yeah 50 yeah no <laughs> that might be a bit of an exaggeration oh it's funny though but um i don't know if i told you this but i reached out to uh to your sponsor hank yeah avink and i told him you know i'm basically his his granddaughter and he, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that very much. 
<laughs> oh, I'm going to tell him that. Oh, my God. But he has some really good uh, resources. It's it's neat to be connected to uh, to such a interesting and thriving community, you know. Yeah, it is. So. You know, we're exploding at the seams. I mean, uh, what you and Sean offer, I mean, you guys have a phenomenal offering over at EXP with your team uh, in, in Florida, St. Augustine. And, uh, you know, our, our company is just bursting at the seams. We're just, you know, we're just growing so fast. It almost hurts how fast we're growing. People are terrified at what we're putting out there right now because they know they can't compete. I've talked to a lot of different agents and brokers uh, and they all look at me like I'm crazy when I tell them what we're doing. And they're like, you can do that. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we can. Huh. Yes, we can. And we're not going to stop. I mean, we're trading on a NASDAQ and the whole nine. Yeah. I mean, talk about innovation and, and, and creativity. I mean, what Glenn Sanford did with EXP, you know, I know from what I've read and, and heard, he was, it was during the crash that he was really prompted to go all in and realized that the brick and mortar was going out eventually. And he yep. followed the trend, you know, of well, when the trend is things are becoming more work from home, work from here, work from there, especially with COVID now. Well, yeah, now, I mean, it's That's like the perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect story for us. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. When I was, when my team and I were leaving our past brokerage, um, we, we had slowly moved our stuff out, right? And we were literally moving out the very last thing, which was giant effing, you know, printer that we had. I mean, this thing was like an industrial size printer. It was huge. Mm -hmm. And we're slowly moving this thing out. And our, our, our then uh, vice president came in and I really disliked this human being. I mean, and I still dislike this human being. And she walked in and she just kind of read us the riot act and sat there and cried. And why didn't you tell me? And yada, yada. And then she looked me straight in the face. I'll never forget that. She goes, your model is going to fail. And I, and I said, Roger that. You have a good one. Mm -hmm. And then I, I gave her a signal with one of my fingers, which wasn't, <laughs> wasn't, which wasn't my thumb. Let's put it that way. Uh -huh. And uh, you know what? not only are we are we you know surviving we're thriving and you're a part of that whole uh, that whole train that we're on mm -hmm. and people didn't believe us glenn sanford saw this in 2009 they were trading at six cents a stock a stock now we're like at over 140 150 dollars a stock we traded on the nasdaq uh we're we're taking multi-million hundred million dollar teams you know you know right left upside down and backwards there's another company their favorite color is red um and they had national calls about uh, EXP on a daily basis or weekly basis with their top managers around the country because they were terrified of what we had to do. And now everyone, all the other companies around the, the country are now um, mimicking what we're doing. Actually, my local favorite color red company, right? You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> I'm thinking I know who it is, uh, what it is, but... I'll tell you off here. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, they took their, their cap from $46,000 and they went down to match ours at $16,000. Oh, wow. Exactly. A, they're matching us across wow. the board. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Exactly. <laughs> and so I just think we're on a great trend and I just love being on this podcast and answering some of your questions, but I know you got a ton more for me. So I'm just going to shut up and let you do your thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you're doing great. I love it. It's all, it's all great stuff. Um, I wanted to ask you while we're kind of on that subject, uh, I'm curious, and this is a bit of, of advice for me and obviously for everyone out there, because that's how this works. Sure. <laughs> But at the end of every episode, you know, I share how people can get a hold of me. And I, I do this. I'm imitating you, by the way, because you know, <laughs> imitation is, you know. I form a flattery. And it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I say, you know, if you'd like to reach out and talk to me, I'd love to chat with you about, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I send them to a website. I send them to www.creativerealestateagents.com. Mm -hmm. And when you, when I listened to you give your call to action back when I was prompted to join, to inquire about joining, um, right. you know, you, you simply said, you know, book a call with me at bookmcdaniel.com. 
And <laughs> when I went over there, it was, it was pretty simple, right? Was it just a Calendly link that you had? Was it just a cal? I mean, cause it was basically just a calendar. Yeah, it was just a calendar. Um, and in the beginning, I didn't even have calendary. It would go directly to me and then I would have to manually book it. Uh, okay. Definitely get calendary. Okay. 100% or another booking app, something like yeah. that, because yeah. goodness gracious, that saves you a lot of headaches. Okay. I was just wondering, because I am I tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. So I built a landing page, no. I'm building like this whole website. And I'm like, I'm probably putting way too much work into this because I was I was like, I just need to ask Greg, because obviously Greg, it's probably working for Greg. That's what he did. And his wasn't complicated. It was really yeah. simple. Just do calendary.com or, you know, whatever other bookings, you know, app you want to use. Uh, the, the point is, is that it just, it takes all the muss and fuss out of everything. Look, people yeah. don't want to be con confused. They just want to get the result. Right. So if you're like, Anastasia, go to, you know, bookmcdaniel.com, find a 30 minute to an hour coaching program or time to talk, you know, find a time that works for you on the calendar. Boom, done. We're, we're in. Yeah. End of story. That's cool. I, I think one of the, the, the downfalls or potential pitfalls for creative people is mm -hmm. that same thing that I'm talking about, just making things more complicated than they have to be and getting, getting lost, you know, along the way where, I mean, the landing page looks cool. Don't get me wrong, but right now, I'm like, is this really necessary? And I'm paying, you know, spending money every month to host it. And it's like, I don't think oh, it needs to be this Girl, we are going to talk <laughs> offline. I have a solution for you. Trust okay. me on this one. Okay. It's cool. super simple and it costs you basically nothing. All right. Sounds great. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to segue into something else that I'm really excited to talk to you about. Let's go. So when going back again to back in the old days when you used to have another show that you would do on Facebook live called, I think it was called morning motivation. Mornings right. with McDaniel. Mornings with McDaniel. Okay. Sounds like a breakfast sandwich or something. It, that's exactly how I thought about it. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the topics that I used to really enjoy you, hearing you talk about was uh, manifestation basically. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, I remember you talking about how how important it is when you're visualizing things that you want in your life, not to just, you know, make it black and white and in words, but to actually physically imagine it like with your using all your senses. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if we could chat a bit about that. And I would also be curious to hear um, any experiences that you've had um, that you have, have like show results from you doing <laughs> this practice. <laughs> <laughs> be careful of that question okay um okay so ask me the first question you want okay first question do you still is is this practice a part of your life right now yes 100 percent um you know i care there i have this little book right here ironically it's a little red book and it has the words exp which i don't think you see there this mm -hmm. um i got this made uh, at a, at a conference about two years ago. And I write a certain phrase down in here on a consistent basis. Now I'm not going to read it to you. And I have chicken scratch because I don't want people to think I'm completely out of my damn mind. <laughs> um, but I, I, I put a lot of intention towards spirituality, um, and into business and into relationships and into, you know, things and life experiences, I have seen things manifest literally out of nowhere. And then I've also seen things completely go away when they needed to go away. And I'm, I'm thankful for everything that happens, but I'm very intentional about what I do. I have my goals. I have my, 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 my dreams written down. Currently right now, I'm driving the dream car of my life. Uh, at this point, I have the, it's a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, which if you guys don't know what that is, that is the fastest Jeep that uh, Jeep makes uh, until they came out with the Hellcat uh, and the Trackhawk, which is, you know, now they're 707 horsepower. This is seven, this is 475 horsepower, 470 horsepower. And I had this on my wall for four and a half years. I looked at it every friggin' day, right? And I would just stare at it when I was doing calls. And it manifested itself into my life uh, in 2017. And it was down to my rotor colors and brake colors of red in the color of, you know, it's a white Jeep, red rotors, 
you know, black interior with, with, you know, all kinds of all the trimmings and the whole nine yards. And I'm like, wow, that is incredible. Then I started manifesting and looking, I'm like, okay, what kind of woman do I want to date? Like, who do I want in my life? And so I, I wrote down the things in my life that I really wanted in, in her. And now only one thing she doesn't do, but that's okay. That one thing's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, but everything else, I wrote down one of the most important things. I want to cook with her. I want her to be, you know, I want to cook beside her. She's a phenomenal cook. And she and I hang out. We do all kinds of crazy fun things. We travel the world together. We laugh at dumb shit. I don't know if I can say that word here. My apologies. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's just because I wrote it down specifically. Darren Hardy, the ex-editor of Success Magazine. If you don't know who he is, go look him up. You know, he was uh, single and he was looking for his wife. He sat there and wrote, uh, I think, four pages, single print uh, of exactly the kind of woman he wanted. And then he wrote four pages of exactly the person he needed to be to attract her. And so I'm like, well, dang, okay, all right. So I did the same stinking thing. And I went out there and I got really hyper specific. I actually have it. Where is it? It's here. Yeah, it's right here. I have it right here. Oh. And this is what, where is it? Don't laugh at me at this photo, okay? Okay. But you see how specific I was in regards to what I wanted in a woman? I got incredibly hypersensitive. Yes, yes he has, he's showing me a photo of, of a, a woman. <laughs> yes, a very... Uh, Two women. I don't know. Yeah, well, I was putting the head with a body. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um, but what I was doing is I was getting hyper hypersensitive on it, and I was really going deep in regards to kind of what I wanted. And so when it comes to manifestation and everything else, you have to be so clear. The universe is like the greatest Amazon delivery system on God's green earth, but Amazon can't deliver you um, a bubbly water, right? Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about a book, it just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know what to deliver you. It just, the skews won't work out, won't work, won't work out. So when it comes to you guys manifesting things into your life, I want you to sit down, get somewhere quiet. I want you to get super hyper specific. Now it can get weird. And I want you to get weird. I want you to get so specific that it hurts. Like if you're looking for a man or a woman or a spouse, or, you know, you're looking for a car or a business, or you're looking for a vacation, whatever it is, I want you to feel, smell, think, and, you know, and just and, you know, like, and take every sense and feel that experience. Your mind does not know the difference. So if you go from your current reality to your future reality, and you say you're in your current reality, you're like, oh, like I had a conversation with an individual like we talked about earlier in the show today. Mm -hmm. This individual was, they're having an interesting time in life, let's put it that way, when it comes to finances. And that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I told this person, I'm like, dude, like you've got to take yourself to another state. Like, cause your brain will shift as soon as you're in this, your current reality and you, you spend time in your future reality. At one point, your brain's going to flip like this. And it's all of a sudden it's going to be like, oh man, this past reality, I don't like it so much. Let's go get this new reality. I will absolutely bet my left pinky toe, maybe even my big toe. The blue one or the black one? Blue one. I don't want to get the black. I don't, I don't want to kill my black ones. I want to kill my blue ones. Um, but I will guarantee you to the fact that at some point, if you're consistent and persistent on this, your, your mind will shift to a point where you will never come back from. And all of a sudden, there will be things you can never explain that will show up into your life. Literally never. You cannot explain it. I've had people, objects, money, you know, opportunities, show up in my life i thought about the other day about doing it you know investment real estate right mm -hmm. and i'm just bullshitting around with this whole thing and this whole idea i had this gentleman show up into my life he has a thirty thousand dollar program that he gives he sells to people i horse traded with him on another subject matter mm -hmm. he gave me this this product at a zero cost and then he's going to coach me for free oh my gosh. just because i thought about it and i put my intentions into it I had a buddy of mine who I basically told to go F off because he was driving me absolutely bonker cakes. And I, I just, I, I thought about it more and more. And I'm like, ah, 
I shouldn't have done that. Like that wasn't the right thing to do. And so I thought about him, thought about him, thought about him, thought about him, thought about him. All of a sudden, bam, he calls me up. Now we're besties and we talk every single day. It's it, the power of intention is, is more powerful than you can ever imagine. So when you think about negative things, negative things come into your life. One of my favorite sayings of all times is that, you know, worrying is a prayer for what you don't want. And if, if you think about that a little bit, I mean, what's the last thing you worried about? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, usually uh, my kid, oh, I know what it was. This morning I was dropping off Ophelia to school and mm -hmm. she she almost like ran into the parking lot and there was a car coming. It was like, so of course, like it was plenty, the driver saw her and I grabbed her in plenty of time, but the, the thought goes into your mind, like, what if I hadn't, you know, or what if, what if the car hadn't stopped or something? So. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I want Ophelia to be healthy and lively and have a beautiful life with a wonderful, you know, family and the whole thing. And what if instead of worrying about her getting hit by a car, which you probably as a mother, you were doing for the rest of the day, which you're probably still doing now. <laughs> right. But what if, what if instead of doing that, you sit there and you wake up every morning, you and Sean are laying in bed. And I do this with my girlfriend. I won't, I'll tell you more about this offline when I tell you what I do. Every, never mind. That's a weird, that has a weird connotation. Uh, <laughs> it's not where you think it's going. You First, you show me these pictures. And, <laughs> and now we're talking about weird things you think about. You're a freak, McDaniel. I know. No, it, it's not like that at all. But I mean, so think about this. Like, what if you woke up every single morning? And because dark and light cannot live in the same place at the exact same time. You have to make a decision, right? And so what if you woke up every morning and you're just like, you know what? I am so grateful for Ophelia. I'm, like, I'm grateful for my family. I wish them love. You know, I, I pray protection over them, you know, you know, the whole nine yards. Instead of going like, oh my God, don't get hit by a car. <laughs> Please, baby, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But you sit there yeah. and you're grateful for things. I mean, fear is the, uh, uh, the single biggest killer of all of our successes. Mm-hmm. And we sit in fear on a consistent basis because we're told to sit in fear. Thank you, you know, mainstream media, social media, you know, your friends. Look and listen to what all your friends and family, what they talk about. It's usually negative information. Why is it negative? Because negative sells. You can't be like at the water cooler in the office going, hey, how's your, how's your day? Ha, freaking amazing, brother. Yeah, I'm going to kill it today. Everyone's like, <laughs> okay you're 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 weird but if you say like oh dude i didn't sleep well like my back hurts my wife's bitching at me oh, these clients are just driving me nuts everyone's like oh yeah yeah everybody but wants to jump on that train for some reason for some reason but it's that it's that distinct is, is that it's that difference of the making that mental shift Right. Um, and just being positive in all aspects. And my girlfriend is naturally a negative person. That's just who she is, right? And I love her for it. I call her my M&M. &M. She goes, she's crusty on the outside, gooey on the inside, right? Because <laughs> she's a big, she, she's a big teddy bear, mm -hmm. but she's, but she's crusty on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I always have been telling her, I'm like, there's always a silver lining. Everything we do, there's a positive outcome for it. Now, you might not like it, might not see it right away. So if there's a breakup in a relationship, a difference in a business relationship, if you lose a client, if you crash your car, if you're late for an appointment, look, everything is done for a reason, okay? Life doesn't happen for to you, it happens for you. Thank you, Tony Robbins. Yeah. And I live by that motto on 100%. So when it comes to manifestation, you have to understand... Every single thing you do, you're manifesting. If you eat that chocolate bar, you're manifesting, you know, you know, you know, chubbiness. If you're, you know, if you go out and make your calls, you're manifesting, you know, business. Now, do you see it all the time at one time? Absolutely not. It takes persistence and consistency. Once you start doing this on a consistent basis, um, you're going to see results. My, my buddy, Nick Sackis, he's, at, he's in your neck of the woods. He's in Florida. Oh yeah, I, I follow him. Mm -hmm. I we call him the ever shrinking man. Yeah, he is shrinking. He, dude, that guy has lost over a hundred, almost a hundred and fifty pounds. That's impressive. At, at this point, I mean, he lo he lost my girlfriend. 
I mean, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable how much that man has lost. But the reason oh, why? I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yes. dude, he changed his diet. He changed his workout ab- habits. He, he, you know, he, 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 does he have a hard day at times? Yes. But yes, all of us, when it comes to manifestation, we're going to have hard days. We're going to have things we don't want to do. We're going to have things that we screw up on. We're going to see little, you know, step forwards and a step back. But if you never stop, guys and gals, I can guarantee you, and please contact me if you want to talk more about this. This is something that's so powerful. It will hurt your heart and soul when you understand the power of manifestation. And it's not woo-woo crystals and incense. You know, it's none of that bullshit. Okay. It's just you making a choice. So I'm going to shut up and let you get back to the questions because I've oh. just talked way too much. Oh man, that, that was wonderful. Um, and I mean, my husband, Sean, I, I wrote, it was the first time I actually tried to specifically um, put out there what I wanted in a man from the universe, which I should have done a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but I, <laughs> finally, in my early 30s, I figured out I needed to do that. And uh, yeah, no, and, and it's, it is amazing because he did, he did fit everything on my list that I had put on there All you know, down to, box. oh yeah, down to like, I'd like to have a recording studio in our house. I mean, we don't really exactly have a recording studio, but we have, we have the equipment. <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> you, then you got what you wanted. I mean, again, that, that comes down to manifestation because you weren't specific about what you actually wanted, right? Yeah. You want a recording studio, so you have the equipment, but you can record, but you don't actually, you didn't say like, I want a room that's 12 by 12, yeah. padded, <laughs> you know, pad, deaded walls, you know, with this equipment, blah, blah, blah. So right. you got what you asked for. I, I know, I, I basically did. I just didn't dig in enough to it, but it's, but I, but actually it's perfect. It's perfect the way it is. Well, you got, you got a sexy piece of man meat oh, yeah. and you, and, and, <laughs> and you have a recording studio. No, I didn't, I did not. Uh, put out pictures of a man's body and then a different face and put them together. <laughs> I'm trying to be as specific as possible, okay? <laughs> and the Luckily, funny thing the is, universe, is, the universe figured out what I had in mind. So, the yeah, and, it and it will mind. consistently c- keep evolving. That's the great part about it. Mm-hmm. You know, keep asking about crazy things. And you guys, when you're listening to me, don't don't be like, oh, this guy's a freaking whack job. Go do this. This is something my dad does. And I literally thought he was completely nutso pants. He would say every time when I was a kid, he'd be like, you know what, Greg? We're going to get a, a parking spot right in the front, wherever, wherever we went. I'm like, you freaking dumb. Uh, <laughs> guess what we got every time? A parking spot in the front of anywhere we went. And I'm like, this is just weird. Like, how does this happen? Because he was intentional. Yeah. So be intentional about everything that you do. I guess we're creative beings, whether we want it or not. I We're going to talk a lot offline about this. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Well, we're get, it, we've been on this uh, Facebook Live for a good long time. We got a lot of co- comments over here that the people are enjoying the insights. So, um, but we can, uh, I say we go ahead and, and wrap it up for now, okay. but I'd love to have you back sometime. It would be my distinct pleasure, Anastasia, to be back on your show. Uh, do we want to answer any questions? Does anybody have any questions we can answer for them? Uh, or are they just kind of the same attaboys? And, you know, thank, thank you for your time. Um, <laughs> somebody said, I do that parking spot thing. It totally <laughs> and, and somebody else said, the dream is more important than the path to that dream. It is. The, the, the path will show itself, but as long as you have the dream, it'll show up for you 1000%. Um, it, it just, and it will show up in a way you probably would never imagine it showing up. I mean, I swore to God, I would never go on a dating app. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is BS. You know, th- all these girls are hoes and blah, blah, blah. And, and I broke down one day and I, the ladies, I'm not saying this about you. This is just my personal opinion. Okay. So I heard <laughs> stories. Um, and then I got on and guess what? I met my girlfriend and she is an absolute incredible human being. And we just enjoy the snozzola out of you know each other's time mm-hmm. doing the dumbest things. Like we're going to go work in the garden this weekend um, and build planter boxes and kill a gopher. That's our, that's our weekend. And then go to dinner with her best friend. <laughs> 
you're gonna murder a gopher is that what you said well we thought we'd already killed him uh but he's back or his cousin is Okay. And so there's going to be another gopher going to going to heaven. Oh, wow. Because okay. he, he they're killed, not good for the garden. They're not good he, for the garden. He killed the backyard, literally destroyed oh. the backyard. I'll send you a photo of what he did in the backyard. Oh, no. And uh, I tend to that backyard like nobody's business. Every weekend I'm back there plucking weeds and mowing and gardening and the whole thing. This little SOB pops up and ate everything. So... Hmm. It's oh, game. You, you got to start visualizing that gopher just not being there. Maybe something gentle, wow. though. You don't have to be, you don't have to, like, you know, it doesn't have to be like, crazy. Like cyanide? Yeah, no, maybe not that. You, <laughs> you sound just like my husband. Like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I heard of a weird way to kill gophers, and it was, oh, not kill them, but just get rid of them. You take juicy fruit bubble gum and you drop it down their holes. No way. And it's, well, how does that work? I mean, what? It supposedly gets into their system oh, no. and then they can't digest it. And oh, then no. they just go become compost underneath the ground. Oh, this is horrible. Wow. But I'm visualizing a nice this way. Terrible. I, mean, I thought maybe they get stuck, their feet get stuck and then they free themselves and then they go take a bath and then they take a nap and then they're, they, they wake it. up and they move, they go somewhere else. That's exactly what happens. You nailed it on the head. <laughs> There's documentaries all about that. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Well, the dark and the light. I hate it. you had to. Yeah, we got a, we got a mix here, a mixture here. But um, it's all good. Thank you so much, Greg. Like this has been a really informative, interesting, inspiring conversation. Anastasia, my distinct pleasure. I'm so thankful that you allowed me onto your show. I'd be honored to have you having uh, to be allowed back onto the show, uh, and we can talk about something else or go deeper on this subject matter and kind of some of the things that you and I have worked on when it comes to, you know, manifestation and mindset and everything else. But I appreciate your time. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, and and thank you out there for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you're interested in getting into real estate or even joining my exp family tree so you can have connections with cool people like greg uh, feel free to reach out to me as i mentioned before my website is www.creativerealestateagents.com or you can message me i'm on facebook obviously and pretty much everywhere else so till next time stay creative